everyone, and welcome to another episode of Canned Air, your tribute to pop culture. I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. And joining us today, returning to the show, actually, uh, to talk about the next installment of his comic series, Grim Space, which is a uh, fairy classic fairy tale sci-fi mashup, uh, which is going to be launching on Kickstarter May 7th. We welcome back comic creator Frank Martin to the show. Frank, thanks for being back, man. Thank you for having me back. It's always a pleasure to chat about all the good things that we chat about. Isn't it, though? And we've, we've talked about some good shit over the years. We, ha- we have had some good laughs, good memories, and hope to do it again. Well, here we are. Number four. You know, the last time you were on was 2001, man. It's been a minute. <sighs> yeah, so that was, minutes. yeah, that was a bunch of school grades ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> In our retro roundtable, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite characters from throughout fantasy. Wait a rather, be what? Two thousand one, you said? Yeah, we didn't start this until two thousand thirteen. No, two thousand twenty-one. Pardon me. To, okay, all right. Everybody that knew what he meant. Oh my god, I had no idea. I was like, man, that's like when we first started. I love Frank's <laughs> frustration. Like, you know what he meant, asshole? <laughs> yeah. No. He, Went right over my head. He he mentioned the one I knew. We're on a four. It's got to be three years ago. Yeah, there's no way we've been doing this 22 years. And if so, <laughs> I need to go Ooh. really reevaluate some shit. <laughs> but in our retro roundtable, again, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite characters from throughout fantasy, whether it be movies, uh, TV shows, video games, etc., comics. You know how it goes. And then we're going to be turning our attention over to Frank to talk about his next installment of Grim Space. But before we do anything, don't forget to find us on Twitter at CandarePod, on Instagram at Canned underscore Air, and on TikTok at Candare Podcast. And at CandarePodcast.com, there's two different ways you can support us, our merch tab, our Patreon tab. Uh, again, two ways for you to give us a little bit of your money, support the show, and get something in return, whether it be a new shirt, mug, hat, or just extra content. Uh, Jack, what am I forgetting? Uh, Evergreen Podcast, the or yeah, that's right. Ever Evergreen, our our podcast work that we're on, as sure footed as a mountain goat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what? Don't forget the only fans page. You guys have. <laughs> yes, yep. you gotta you gotta push that too. That's the second tier. You gotta join Patreon to even find out that exists. <laughs> you know, it's it's like the other money that's got content. negative subscribers too. <laughs> If you're listening to us uh, either, you know, on Apple Music or uh, Spotify or however you're listening to us, check out our YouTube page because we've been very active since the uh, new year has started. A lot of the new episodes are going on YouTube the second they post to the uh, podcast player as well. And if you've just found us on YouTube, check out our audio catalog that dates back over a decade. Lots and lots of great conversations, three of which are with our dear friend Frank here. So check those out. And I think that's everything covered, right? Am I forgetting anything? No, that's it. I think that's it. All right, guys, before we get started, who saw the who was out seeing the eclipse today? Oh, me, me. That, my eyes hurt. I, I had kids, so I kind of had to do it by default. Sure, sure. <laughs> Were you guys taking pictures or anything? I didn't go that far, but no. Um, it was at dismissal time, so it's kind of like you go to pick up the kids, and everyone's like, hey, look up. I'm like, okay, I might as well. And I'm surprised said, oh, that look. you even had school. Um, all the schools around here were off for the day because of it. It's were a they holiday? Really? Oh, well, you know Man. what? It's, I think it's actually spring break for uh, the schools in the area. Something oh. like that. Whatever it is, they're out. <laughs> <laughs> they're out and about. But, uh, you know, I took, a, I took a video camera and set it up and... <clears throat> Uh, my GoPro. I took uh, like three or four different cameras, and uh, of all of them, I got one grainy piece of shit shot. Like <laughs> none of it worked. <laughs> it's I the was, effort that counts. Uh, yeah, I would say it does, but not really. It goes. It goes unnoticed. But um, it was. Still I was cool. taking. I was taking my phone, and I took the 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 eclipse glasses and was putting them over right and i dropped down the the sensitivity of the or the the exposure and it's still even when it was totally covered it was still just a big yellow spot it didn't work yeah i was kind of mad i wasn't able to get any pictures of like any partial covering but um as soon as it was total totally covered 
uh, I was able to snap a few. I, I was I was doing the same thing, taking pictures through the the lens of the glasses, and you know I got a few blurry shots, but I was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to risk the camera." Took it off, and I just pointed the phone right at it and snapped a few, and that's where I got my best picture. Not to say it's great, but anyway, <laughs> it was still cool to see um, in person. It I was never so seen dark outside. It was so cool, was and then really weird. Yeah, and then the, we had ninety percent in here in New York, so it wasn't. It looked weird, but it didn't look like dark, dark. Yeah, we had 100%. And it's like yep. the second it totally covered, there was like this, it almost turned blue, like a blue glowing ring in the sky. It was incredible, man. I've never seen anything. I've seen eclipses before, but never 100% covered. So before you mm -hmm. die, you see the ring is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's just get right to it. Our favorite characters from uh, fantasy. Jack, why don't you kick us off, sir? So this one, I was a big fan of when I saw her in the movie, but then I went and saw King Kong X Godzilla. What was that last weekend when it came out? And they showed the trailer oh, for her. Yeah. Oh, it's so, out already? Uh, yeah, it came out. It's been out a week already. Week? <sighs> Two weeks, maybe? Wow. Yeah, Easter. Where? I start Easter weekend. It came out. Yeah. I'm a terrible geek. I had no idea. <laughs> it was good. It was fun. Just like all of them. The worst part is the people. Of course. <laughs> That's the worst part of everything, to be honest. With you. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Did you see minus one? No, not yet. Because I have not. I have not either. Everyone's saying I haven't either, but everyone's saying that's like the best Godzilla film. And I'm wondering how they compare to each other but i i would really doubt they could oh, be compared i don't think they'll be comparable <laughs> but it they're was different good. experiences they're different things uh, yeah sure. yeah it was it was fun i i wouldn't say it was good i mean i had godzilla <laughs> and king kong and monsters so yeah i think they put too much humanity in in those characters though yeah. you know what i, I watched you'll you'll, you'll see I watched monarch the the apple TV plus show or whatever it's called, the one that the TV show that's based in that universe. Yeah. And that was pretty good. They, you know what? They actually made the human characters, you care a little bit about them because it was, they weaved it into the history of the monsters with Monarch. So it was like, it was all one big story and it was, it was entertaining. You know, it was. Well, yeah. that was supposed to be part of the big thing with Minus One is because it's not just, yeah, go Godzilla. It's you actually feel for all the people there. And you, I mean, you, you really see them getting stepped on and stuff too. <laughs> so you feel bad yeah, for what's happening. <laughs> but uh, during the previews, we saw the preview for the new Furiosa movie. Okay. And I, I have to that say, <clears throat> that's Mad, uh, the, the, Max, Mad right? Max. Yeah. Yep. Oh, with Anna Taylor Joy or whatever her name is. Yeah. Charlene, Ther Charlize Theron's character. The so woman. Charlize Theron's not in it. It's no. It's no, like Anna prequel. Joy Taylor. Yeah, yep. It's hmm. her to where how she got to be where she was at for the Mad Max movie. But her, I don't know. There's not a lot of talking in those movies, which I, maybe that's that's not why she's a favorite character because she's a woman and she's not talking in Mad Max. Oh, movie. please! Everybody knew what you were saying. <laughs> I know. That's why I just wanted to clarify that. That's not where I was going. You can't cover it up once you said it. It's out of the yeah, you're you're outed. All right. But no, she's, I don't know. She's just a badass character. She was awesome in, in Fury Road. And now you get to see her whooping some even more ass and see how she got to where she was. I'm excited. Is that did what anybody it is? ask for that movie? I felt like they just, just, did anybody ask for that movie or they just like, yeah, we're going to. That's what I was wondering. This. I don't think <laughs> anyone asks for movies anymore. They just hand them to us and say, here, you would like, you would you like this? It's like. Go into your aunt's house or your grandma's, and she's just like, "Here, would you like a sandwich?" And you're like, no, grandma. All right, here, I'll eat your sandwich. I didn't want it though. You better be careful. The Mad Max people are going to hire you as a spokesman. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but at least you know that sandwich is going to be good, whether you wanted it or not. Though that's <laughs> Mad Max prequel Furiosa, just as good as grandma's sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh my god. I, I just I, mailed know, that to myself, my poor man's copyright. So I've never, um, I'm not, I mean, the, when the first one came back with Tom Hardy, I saw that one and that one was cool. I saw the Charlize Theron one, but you know, like the next day I really like totally forgot about it. And I don't know why. I mean, 
I've said before, it's just like a bunch of driving around. It's just like, well, this is, gets boring, you know? <laughs> Isn't that the same movie? The one with Tom Hardy and yeah. Charlize Theron? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So they only made, they made one, like, of that generation, and now they're going to the prequel? Right. I heard the Mad Max video game was pretty good, but I never... Uh, I've heard that too, and I I think I even have it because it was free to download at one point. But I'm, I'm, not a, well. I'm not a big Mad <laughs> Max guy. I haven't seen any of them except that one, the newer one. I, I don't know what it is about those movies. Uh, they're just kind of cool. I mean, there's nothing really to look at. I mean, the vehicle, maybe it's just the vehicles because they're always so outrageous. Yeah. It's a cool setup, you know, as a writer. I, I appreciate like just. A barren wasteland and a bunch of people in cars just like going at it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's a cool, it's a simple setup for a, for a lot of action. So, um, no, but I'll I mean I'll watch anything if it's for streaming and I don't have to pay extra for it. <laughs> this is pretty much how it goes. Right. I have a, I have a good feeling that uh, Matt this new Mad Max will fall into that category. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? There's a lot of movies I do want to see, but I just I can't get to the theater. Like I want to see Dune too, but I it just same. I can't like find the time. And I don't. If, uh, I just don't like that I had to watch Dune one on TV. I mean, I never went to the theater. I guess I didn't have to because I think it did come to the theater at one point. Maybe at one point, but originally it was part of that whole. They just decided out of nowhere to drop every single one of their movies on Max like during the pandemic, which is which was awesome. But it's kind yeah. of like you were just like screw it. <laughs> yeah, I I have no interest really in seeing Dune, and I I feel like maybe if I watched it, I would dig it. But I don't know. I, there's nothing pulling me to Are you it. You a Dune fan? No, I don't no book? shit about Dune. No. <laughs> so it's kind of like I know nothing about this thing, and I don't care about this thing that I know nothing about. Pretty much, yeah, but I'm not saying I wouldn't go out, you know, take a chance on it. I'm not saying I wouldn't watch it, but it, it, at this point, it would take a uh, it take a lot to get me there. It takes me a you know a lot to watch anything that I'm not like overly interested in. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a huge. It's such an obscure story for one, and it's not exactly. It is. But it's you one may, of my favorite you have novels, to think about. so I'm really I'm really looking forward to the second part. But I'm just like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just an old curmudgeon. I'm just like I'm not going out of my house to sit in the theater. See, I love the 50. theater. I do. I love it. But it's like if I go, I feel like I drop 150 dollars every time I oh, go. Oh yeah, no <laughs> doubt. <Yep. laughs> Look, they have these collectible things. It's worth fifty dollars now, or cost fifty bucks. And sure, now, I thought about thirty dollars to get in here. And now the theaters are selling beer, so it's like, oh, now I gotta mm-hmm. like <laughs> buy twelve dollars, twelve dollar cans, and parking, and the kids want to come, and then they want all the the crap to eat. So it's just oh, you gotta pay for parking. Eat. Yeah, so yeah. Depends on where it is. And oh, you know I guess you, yeah, you're in New York, aren't you? Shit. Yeah, and they charge for yeah. everything. And it's it's two hour limit parking. And I'm kind of like, why do you have two hour limit parking at the movie theater? Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Doesn't make sense. No. Not with three hour movies being the normal thing now. <laughs> no, but um, you know what it is? This was a movie theater I went to as a kid and it was dumpy. And then it was small. It had like, I don't know, a couple theaters and it went under and it was closed for a very long time. And somebody for some godforsaken reason dumped a whole lot of money into it and refurbished it and opened it up. So it's like a cool refurbished, small local theater. And I want to support them. So I do kind of go with the kids and we see like Pixar movies and stuff like that. That's cool. But it's awesome when anyone does that. But it's still expensive. It's kind of like, do I want to spend all this money or just wait till it comes out on streaming and I pay my $15 a month and then... I totally get it, it, man. I totally understand. I just... For me, like, watching it at home is just not the same. And you are right. You get gouged to the, you know, to no end when you go to actually see it in the theater. All the expenses. It's a different experience. But, yeah, when in the theater... You know, it's like going to the gym too. I when I, I could work out at home, but I don't. It's it's like I got to get to the gym to actually commit and like pay attention to what I'm doing. You know what I mean? No, actually, totally, totally. 
Same thing at the theater. If I'm there when the lights go down, I've already committed. I've dropped the money. Like I'm going to like enjoy this <laughs> film. And when the lights go down, the walls just go away. It's just you and the movie at home. It's, you know, the dishwasher's running or the laundry's going. You know, there's always something to take my attention away from it. I can't immerse myself in it at home. The furnace kicks on or air conditioner kicks on. So then you got the cold air return yep. blowing in your ear. Yep. Cat throws up on the floor. <laughs> I, um, I saw a, a, I don't know, they called it a news segment, and they were talking about technology. And this might be far off in the future, but the guy was talking about one of the things that streaming services are toying around with is they want to use like Xbox Connect technology, you know, that things that where they could see into the room and mark specific people. Mm-hmm. So if you if you buy a, stri- a ticket to streaming, they're going to count the number of people in the room and charge you accordingly oh wow no shit I thought that was i thought that was a wild concept he just kind of like floated it as a possibility of an idea that they're thinking of i don't i haven't heard any place like instrumenting it but it's definitely a possibility like they could so, totally do that oh easily they could, yeah. but like so what's that mean let's say you've got three people at home but you're the only one wanting to watch this movie you sit there, it sees one person. Get out of the room. <laughs> yeah, but what if they walk through? Like, the, like, will it like sent somebody else now in front of the TV and be like, shut it down? Like, oh, I have no idea. <laughs> or no what idea. if somebody Alarms just sat to the off. side of the TV? Like, everybody stay over there against the wall <laughs> the, to watch. The, do- the dog Sitting walks there. through. You did not buy a pet ticket to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have no idea, but it's. That would be yeah. insane. I mean, I know that they've already got Jack. I think you've done this before, um, like VR movie theaters, like where you can watch with friends online mm-hmm. a movie and it puts you in a movie theater, right? <laughs> yeah, they. You can do it to where, like, I can hook my computer up and stream a movie, but you can also pay to, like, everyone has to do like a paid movie because there's like 3D ones. Like I watched the like, Ninja Turtles in 3D. It's cool, but how's that work? Everyone 3D? else. It's just like sitting in the movie theater, except you're not wearing glasses. It it still looks exactly 3D, just like it does. Huh? You wear it through the, you watch it through the VR headset. Is that what yep. It? Yep. That's the only bad part is sitting there with this. You know, it's not real heavy, but it's heavy enough that after a while, you know, two hours, and you're like, oh my neck. Yeah, no, they're gonna get. <laughs> we're gonna get this special VR uh, head support, so you could watch three hour long movies. <laughs> 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 it's just like a rubber band that just goes around your head just holding hold <laughs> boy we went on a tangent there that's what i love about the retro yeah that was my choice that was my pick <laughs> let's go over to frank what you got man uh i'm gonna cheat so um we were gonna do sci-fi space shows mm-hmm. and and they could be fantasy space fantasy and the one i was gonna do was farscape i think we did that last time i was Farscape. I think Does we that probably count? did. I know that Does one's coming. Does that up. count as fantasy? Yeah, I think. So. I don't know. I've never watched Farscape. I'm sorry. Jeremy's uh, version so of fantasy is not now. It's very limited. It's, it's not. Now. It's we, yeah. This is reality. Fantasy is anything else. <laughs> Wait, what? <I'm> fiction. <laughs> That's what you said before, because we try we're doing fantasy, and I, I was pulling out of like actual fantasy Lord of the Rings type realm, and you're like, no, I was pretty much like anything. Fantasy. No, the other Star Wars, Wars, Wars is no, fantasy. No, 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 no. that's not <laughs> the, what you're. The instance you're talking about, we had chosen <laughs> like fantasy. All right, let's get the context for retro, <laughs> and we were talking like fucking wizards and elves and shit like that, and you had said something about like deep, like uh some fucking space video game oh i do have it backwards yeah okay yeah so you got it backwards asshole not me <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know you might be right though because when i was looking online uh you know researching for this trying to get some ideas when i typed in fantasy movies it wasn't limited to elves and fairies and shit <laughs> it was a whole bunch of stuff so i don't know when i hear fantasy that's what i think of am i wrong i don't know I mean, like Twilight is Twilight considered fantasy, or is that just supernatural? Urban. The internet urban certainly fantasy? thinks so. The internet. Well, let's go to the internet. Internet. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. Let's get opinions from the internet. I guess I just have a very, very pinhole view on what fantasy is, and which is why I was probably having so much trouble finding any uh, any pics. I mean, that's okay. 
That's okay. I mean, so far, so Star Wars. Would you consider Star Wars fantasy? Yes. Yes. Space space fantasy. Correct. So Farscape is very similar, I would say, to Star Wars in that it's got a lot of colorful creatures. I don't think there's any like space wizards like Jedi, but it's it doesn't come across like Star Trek. Like Star Trek feels like more sci-fi to me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it has like fantasy elements, like uh, they have extraterrestrial beings that are so powerful that they can alter reality. Like that's a little getting to a little fantastical elements, but. In Farscape, there's the character. They have Mike. archetypes. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's where a big difference is. If you have characters that like are kind of based in a certain type versus just like you know Star Trek, is there's captain, lieutenants, blah blah blah. They all have. They their... try to make an official the fleet. Yeah. Um. Well, in Farscape, my favorite character, Jack. Are you familiar with Farscape? Oh yeah. Is pilot. Yes, <laughs> he's come up a lot on this show, actually, from me because because I, of pro- him, I yeah. probably brought him up too when we brought up Farscape. I must have blacked out for those three episodes I was on, but I must have brought him up at some point because um, he's Wait such an minute. interesting character. Was he a so, puppet? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're like ninety percent puppets. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Oh. <laughs> anyway, he's huge. He's a huge character, and he he is part of a species of aliens that they're the only ones who can successfully merge with a sentient ship, a ship that's alive. And they are able to pilot the ship by basically, it's kind of like Venom when they combine and they, they have become one mind. Mm-hmm. He can, the pilot can basically pilot the ship through his thoughts. And because it's such a complicated thing, once they're fused, they're fused for life. And it's like a hermit crab almost, except he doesn't ever. Yeah, that's a good description of it. Separate. But he's a, he's like he's a very cool crack character. First off, he's a puppet, so to see the uh, the live action characters interact with him is great. His voice actor was great. He had they fleshed out his backstory incredibly, and it was he was just like I felt he was the rock of the show because so much of the show takes place on that ship, and that ship becomes such a focal point for all the plot points. And the ship can't really exist without him. So, mm-hmm. so I like, I just, every, any episode that focused on him, you really felt for him as a character. And that's my answer. <laughs> it was it crazy to see actually how for... big he was. Yeah. You, so you don't see him a lot because he's in his command center and everybody else is going around the ship. So when you see him, he's typically by himself, just talking to them through the ship. But every once in a while they'll go and they'll visit him and you see the size of him compared to everybody else. And he's, He's huge. Yeah. You could be a spokesman for Farscape, Frank, because this is the first time I've ever heard anyone talk about it. Where I'm like, you know what? I think I might want to check that out now. <laughs> so Farscape, when I first started it, it's a show from the 90s. So it's kind of like, all right, I got to get used to like watching something from the yeah, 90s. Yeah, I remember it being on. And I don't know why I started watching it. It was on Netflix and I was working out a lot. So I'm like, I need a workout show. And I got through the first couple episodes, like the first dozen or so episodes. They were slow and I forced myself to watch him and from what I heard was after that period of time the executives kind of like stepped back and just let the showrunners do their thing and then that's when it got good is when they were really able to flesh out characters and do things that they wanted to do and it was a good space fantasy show and the lie reason I brought it up is because Grim Space is based a lot on what they do you know these these a whole bunch of alien characters. There's very little, there's no humans. And even the human ish characters, they're not humans. They're a different race and they have different qualities. So it's like, there's only one human on the entire show and a whole bunch of puppets, a lot of makeup, pretty good effects for a 90s show. And they had tons of action. It was just, it was good. It was, good. was it the Jim Henson company? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why the effects were so good. Yeah. yeah. It was sense. like they decided to not do something that was like Kitty. I mean, is Dark Crystal considered Kitty? A little bit. Like, <sighs> Maybe because it's puppets. That's the only way I can see it. But fa- I was fa- terrified but, watching that show. <laughs> but Farscape is, is definitely not designed for kids at all. Within mind. No. It's definitely more... Uh, intelligent and and high-end in that regard and i know after doing a rewatch through the first season was really hard because the makeup got so much better after the set first season yeah Hmm. the first season was it was kind of a a slog you know what it was they did like 
monster of the week type episodes in the beginning. They're like, this mm-hmm. is going to be this and then this. And then afterwards they created long form storytelling where all the characters had arcs and yep. they, they introduced like different factions were warring with each other. So it was, it got a lot more in depth. How many seasons were there? Oh, I have no idea. I think there was three or four, three or four. Yeah, I know. And then, and then it got canceled. And then because a lot of fans complained, they wrapped it up with like, a mini series at the end, you know. Yeah. Who who starred in it? <laughs> nobody. Oh, yeah, nobody. Nobody. That, nobody. Nobody off the top of my head. Oh, that's you'd right. You'd see them and, all, and you'd no, be like, "Oh, okay." The only, the only one I can think of definitively is Claudia Black. Yeah, she's the the most popular. Um, far not star star Stargate. The guy that was the pilot or the the human on Farscape was in Stargate towards the end if you ever watch that wow. otherwise he hasn't been in a lot of stuff yeah yeah i recognize none of these people and anyone else <laughs> you wouldn't recognize anyway because they had such heavy makeup on sure and then, then they had another puppet who was basically like a fat horny toad who just loved to eat <laughs> he was he's he was an exiled prince yeah. and he was like he couldn't go home and then he just wanted to eat all the time and burp and fart and he like demanded everybody treat him as royalty, but they were all outlaws. So he's like, they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a few fun. people I know. <laughs> it's uh, it was a it was a fun show. I wouldn't do a rewatch. It's very hard for me to rewatch things simply because there's just so much out there and that I want to watch. You're right. That's it's hard truth. to go back, and especially a show that you want to commit to. I just rewatched a Star Trek episode. The um. Subspace Rhapsody, the musical episode on Strange New Worlds. I haven't watched watched that at all. A lot of the new stuff. Season two of Discovery was the last Star Trek that I watched. I never watched any Star Trek growing up. And for some reason now I'm like on a Star Trek kick. So I watched Discovery and Strange New Worlds. And now I'm working through Deep Space Nine to talk about 90s sci-fi shows. So (laughs) I got like four or five episodes left of season two. I want to uh, I'm working, I'm working still it. make it through Picard. I haven't watched all that, just some of it, uh, just in preparation for when we had Jonathan Frakes on. But um, I would like to sit down and watch it from front to back. Not that I would understand everything, but I think I'd understand a good majority of it. I didn't watch any of The Next Generation, so I'm just kind of like staying away from it because I feel it's very nostalgia-based. I, uh, well, maybe. I don't know I don't any know. Of the characters. It's, it's, it's not my it's not my bag, you know. I like watching the original Star Trek series and that that doesn't come from a nostalgia base. I didn't grow up with it. I started watching it as an adult and I really enjoyed it, you know, but I think you would probably be the same thing with uh, next generation. Though it doesn't get quite as corny at times. Um I mean it can it can lay some cheese on, but it's still a good series, I think. I appreciate the original series episodes, but I can't like binge them or watch them for long periods of time the same way you can for uh, Deep Space Nine. So if it's an hour long episode, I'm like, I gotta watch this in 20 minute breaks while I'm folding laundry or something because it's just, <laughs> it's just. I mean, I appreciate it for what it was at its time, but it's it's not that time anymore. <laughs> sure, I get that. So. All right, well, uh, boy, uh, I, I think I've probably got time for one pick here. So let me see. Um, Favorite character from fantasy, I would have to say, again, because I'm not really big into fantasy, uh, I would have to say, you know, Harry Potter and uh, any of the Harry Harry Potter movies. All right, I'm, never... I'm, I'm out, guys. I'm going to leave real quick before we get into. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Not a fan? Just blasphemed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to pick one fantasy character, let's go to Harry Potter series. Well, like I said, man, I don't know <laughs> shit about fantasy, really. It's like very, very surface level. Uh, and I can't even say that I like the Harry Potter movies. I've seen them all through once, and um, I retained nothing. You from look, them. you look so overjoyed for this topic. Let me. I'm gonna pick a character from us. I'm making franchise. it work, I don't Frank. Even, I don't even. <laughs> Harry, I like the Harry Potter movies. They're they're entertaining. I understand the appeal. Um, I, I remember when I was watching them that it wasn't until about halfway through all the movies that I started to get interested. When they were little kids running around, I just didn't really give a shit. 
But um, as they started to grow up and people started to get killed off and stuff started to get serious, I'm like, okay, you know, now it's The girls got a little bit more mature. I see what you're saying. Well, no, no, (laughs) not that. (laughs) But like classmates would get killed. Like the stakes were raising, like it was getting darker. And I was like, okay, I can dig that. But that was my favorite one was the fourth one. And that's the one where Voldemort comes back. And that's when things got dark. So that was my favorite one. That was the one that where they had the torn, the torn, the tournament. I've got no idea. See, that's another thing. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I couldn't tell any of them apart. They all run together in my mind. Um, but the only thing that I do remember about all these movies is the character uh, Severus Snape, uh, Alan Rickman's character, because you know what an arc that character had. Jesus, you you hate him. You think, what's the deal with this dude's attitude towards Harry? And then you just, through all of this, all these movies, all these years, you realize he loved him. You know, he loved his mother. He loved him. He was always trying to protect him, but never was letting it show. I thought, damn, that's, that's, a, that's a good character arc right there. But that's all. I, I never saw the last movie. Oh, well... I guess you don't need to now. <laughs> well, which I think one? you just because saved the, me. The last movie is technically two. I think that was in part two of the. I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember either. either. Yeah, it was in one of the last two, but that's the only thing I've really retained from the Harry Potter films. Maybe I should watch them again, but you know, if I'm going to sit down and dedicate that kind of time to something, it isn't going to be rewatching fucking Harry Potter. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you might as well watch Lord of the Rings or all the nine right. Star Wars is. is- I um, I I mean you can't go wrong with Alan Rickman. He's just, no, you can't. Yeah, he's just a masterclass of an actor. Yeah, he is. And but yeah, that's I, I still like I just remember that flashback because wasn't it like Harry touched him as he's dying or something and he could see his thoughts or memories or something and just that boof that epiphany was like it was huge. Some nonsense like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did we have any other picks from the fantasy realm, gentlemen? Yeah. I think next time I need to go re-listen to the past episodes before I decide the retro. The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, the reason this, uh, I mean, I guess my pick was the only one that didn't really yield much much results here in the retro. You guys' picks, we ended up talking for a long time, but I had told Frank what we're going to talk about is uh, movies that take place in space, but no Star Trek and no Star Wars. And then I went back and uh, checked out the last time Frank was on, which was again, 2021, Jack, there you go. (laughs) And um, that's exactly what we talked about then. So I felt like a perfect ass and got a hold of everybody like an hour and a half before we recorded to be like, oh, oh, fantasy characters. (laughs) Really backfired on me. (laughs) I I was emailing you. I didn't realize... Oh, yeah. you, you did write Jeremy. Why did I think I was talking to Randy? Because you were originally. I've, oh, because I've, I was. And yeah. Then... I have taken over. Okay. So, I mean, it made sense for you to pick fantasy characters as this retro then, considering you're such a fantasy buff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was just doing it because I couldn't do the space element of your book. Let's just move. On. Yeah, but I, I chose a space show. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We still, we still. I think we made a successful retro right there, as, right? Well, as a as a, a bonus character, I didn't know if this was going to count. I was going to choose Link from the Legend of Zelda series. Ooh, okay, there's a good pick. There I right. mean, it's not it's not a movie. It's not a TV show. I think they're making a Zelda movie, but he. That's is, what I heard. That'd be sweet. You I think know they've I'm, always been making one. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed because I heard it's a live action movie. And I got really excited because somebody after the Mario Brothers movie came out, somebody did one of those fake MCU timelines mm-hmm. and they put and they put Mario, Kirby, Zelda, I don't know, Donkey Kong. And then they've had Super Smash Brothers is like what they're the build up to. And that would have been awesome. if They did it like a full animated smash, uh, lead up to a Smash Brothers movie. That would have been that would phenomenal. be incredible. Yeah, but. I'm not in charge. I think it'll happen if as long as we're patient. I think <laughs> But yeah, happen. Zelda, I chose Link because he's just he's like the same character in every game, but he's not. You know, it's a different incarnation of Link and he's like this silent hero who just he's just a trooper, man, you know? He mm-hmm. he like gets thrust into these adventures and he just picks up his sword, he never says a word and just fights witches and giant monsters and he's just like, "Okay, 
I guess. I got to collect these seven magical things. No. <laughs> I've got two. I've got uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Is that what the new one's called? That's the new one. I haven't yeah. played it yet. My my boys Me neither. Playing it. So. <laughs> you mean, I haven't played it. <laughs> no, I haven't played shit. <laughs> I don't even know why I have it. To be honest, <laughs> it's still in the plastic, man. <laughs> I like well that once you take it out of the plastic, it loses its value. That's why you just buy the game and you put it up on a. On a shelf. Yeah, but it's a weird thing because when I was a kid, man, and I got a new game, like it took every ounce of my will to control my excitement to get, you know, just the time it took to get home and rip that thing out and start playing it. And it's now just like, eh, maybe in a couple months. (laughs) (laughs) So you're saying adulthood killed that, the joy. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. The spark inside. Mm. No doubt, Frank. (laughs) I think that's what we all can take from this conversation. (laughs) Jack silent as shit. <laughs> Let's just turn our attention over to Frank, man. Thanks again for being here. I'm sorry. This is kind of a patchwork episode. Next time we'll prepare a little bit better. You know what? I I found out that the new Godzilla King Kong movie is already released for two weeks. So yeah, I'm calling it a win. All right. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't have fun, but I'm just saying, we. Uh, you know what I'm saying. If you've listened this far, everyone knows what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about this next installment of your comic series, Grim Space. Uh, sure. And this is, again, launching on uh, Kickstarter May 7th, correct? May 7th. Last time I checked. May 7th. All right. Well, you know, for the people who weren't here last time and even us, can you give us a refresher? And can you tell the people that weren't here last time you were here exactly what Grim Space is? So as we said before, Grim Space is a mashup of fairy tales and space fantasy. So basically a Star Wars S universe. The first issue was Jack and the Beanstalk. And then I did a spinoff and I did Pinocchio as a robot instead of a puppet. And even though all the stories are kind of standalone, isolated, they're all in a shared universe. Characters have cameos, storylines lead one into another. And it's a lot of fun. My next launch is for, I'm doing a different fairy tale that a lot of people don't know. It's called The Golden Bird. And the reason I chose this one is because the plot fits nicely into a sequel to the first Grim Space. So in the first one, uh, Jack meets a giant alien and he steals an egg like he does in the fairy tale. And in this follow-up, the egg hatches, which is a golden bird, or it's called the golden flying mm. thing because it's kind of like an alien. And they they have to they crash land on a planet, and in order to get off the planet, they have to chase the bird down and find it. So it's a it's a fun adventure. I had a, this was the true mashup of like fantasy, traditional fantasy, and sci-fi stuff. So I kind of like threw in some elements. So for instance. Everybody knows that a troll lives under a bridge in fantasy. Sure. So in this sci-fi universe, it's not a regular bridge. It's like a rainbow light bridge, you know? So I kind of, I tried to like mix those two elements together. So I'm excited to see what people think. of it. So the golden bird uh, is, is the story you were just telling where that hatches from the egg that Jack brought down from the beanstalk. That's, that's actual like a, uh... Fairy tale no. lore, or so that's those just are two, what, where you've taken it? Yeah, so they're two separate stories. There's Jack and the Beanstalk and the Golden Bird, and I kind of use the Golden Bird as a sequel to what happens in Grim Space. So, so what, if, are you able to talk, tell us what that original uh, fairy tale of the Golden Bird is? Because I've never heard that sure. one, or will that give away so too much? What, basically what happens is a, um, a king has a tree of golden apples, and a, a golden bird comes and eats all the apples and he gets pissed. So he he has, I forget what it is. I think he has sons and he sends the sons off to go and find the bird and bring it back. And I don't know why, kill it maybe. <laughs> but they, they get warned along the way. They said, look, there's these inns. There's an inn that's, uh, that you're going to encounter on your journey. And don't stay at the inn because if you do, you'll never leave. And I use that element comes into play in the story. And because it's the same crew. So the, all the crew members that are in Jack and the Beanstalk, or I should say Jack and the Nav Unit, the first Grim Space, they are the, the sons that go out in search of the bird and their group splits up. And one is going to stay at an inn that 
doesn't allow them to leave and the other one does. So I'm kind of trying to like reinterpret wow. the the fairy tale for this for this story, which is challenging, you know, to try to make something fit into a pre-existing story that you have. But it it I think it ended up working out. I mean, people are going to tell me when they read it. <laughs> so. I really like the angle yeah. you took with that, though. That's very inventive. I, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of that. I mean, that's the the fun part of this stuff is that these stories already exist, and I'm really doubling down on Grim Space. All six of my Kickstarter next years are going to be Grim Space titles, and so I'm going a lot more traditional ones. I'm going to do a Three Little Pigs, a Cinderella, um, a Captain Hook one, but then I'm gonna. I don't want to just do Grimm's fairy tales just sticking around Europe. I'm gonna do a, a Monkey King one from out of China, the folklore uh, character there. Also, I'm doing an Anansi story, which is the spider trickster from out of West Africa. So I'm trying to branch out and do do different things, not just stick to European Grimm's fairy tales. Sure. And and are you going to do um, with these other fairy tales kind of what you've done with you know Jack and the Beanstalk leading into the Golden Bird, where they kind of somehow will, will run into each other consistently, or are they just going to be their own like one off kind of things? They're all one-offs. However, I mean, I, I'm taking the MCU approach. So characters, there are going to be cameos, characters from one lead into another. There's going to be story threads that continue from one book to the next. And eventually I'm going to do my my crossover, my Avengers, at the end of next year, which is going to be a, a Wizard of Oz type story where I take, I'm going to cherry pick different characters from across the line and bring them all together together. Mm-hmm to be versions of um, the Tin Man and Scarecrow and, and such. So, so yeah. It, Interesting. Yeah. So if you if you can pick up any one of the Grim Space books, just read it, follow along, enjoy it. However, if you read them all, you will get a better experience because you'll see, like, when they reference something, you'll know what they're talking about and such. You'll see all the cameos. Be like, I know this character from there and stuff like that. So, yeah, like little Easter eggs for the people who yeah. have been there for all of it. Yeah. So, for instance, I Three Little Pigs, I'm introducing a, a Sherlock Holmes type character. She's a female, the female detective in space. Her name is Shelley Holmes. And um, she is going to become the main character, the protagonist in Cinderella. So you can pick up Cinderella and meet this character and know who she is and not know who she is and still follow along. However, you're going to have a better experience if you see her first appearance in the Three Little Pigs one. I see. Mm-hmm. that's awesome so, man and this is going to be a 60 page book uh i believe you said coming out are they all yeah. standing mm-hmm. to be that long or no well what this one is is it's really three issues uh 20 pages each but i mashed them together for the kickstarter and they're gonna it's gonna be a 60 page trade the complete story and then eventually with the publisher brings it to comic stores they're gonna break it up into single issues. i see that that's, that publisher being scout comics correct that's at least that's the plan. Okay. Nothing in comics ever goes to plan. <laughs> I don't think it nothing in anything creative ever goes to plan. So we shall see. That's awesome, man. So uh, this Kickstarter that's starting on May 7th, uh, I mean, you've already said, you know, one of the things you can get on there, are all these comics put into one, you know, trade graphic novel. Uh, what other kind of th- uh, rewards can um, backers expect? Or do you, are you I'm even going- gotten that far? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm manic. So everything is done, ready to launch. I am going to have past issues of Pinocchio, uh, P1 Nokio, and Jack and the Nav Unit, the other two Grim Space books. For the, the Kickstarter, I'm going to have a standard issue, standard cover, I should say, that people can get. But I'm also, for the first time, I'm doing a spot foil so on uh, like a variant cover. So the, the Golden Bird is going to be on the cover, and the 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 golden bird is going to have streaks of golden foil on the cover. So it's going to look kind of cool. It's going to be something a little more high end, a little more interesting. Hell yeah. I mean, anytime in like the eighties or nineties, you got a comic that had any kind of like foil print on the front or like foil cover. It was just the bees fucking knees. It still is. Anytime I see them, I'm just like, Oh, they they got rid of that. They're either too cheap or they were using it too much and it became gimmicky. So it's like, they don't want to really do stuff like that anymore. No doubt. I, uh, I saw a, a pop-up comic cover where it kind of like unfolded and like a character popped up, which I thought was another cool. They're kind of thinking outside the box, but they never execute stuff like that, right? Never. Right. It always ends up breaking or some nonsense. 
You're Open absolutely it up right too many about times and it falls apart. Yeah. You're absolutely right about the foil covers, though. You know, I think they have fallen out of favor. But I mean, I guess my love of it and I, all of our love probably comes for, just from our nostalgia of how badass they were when we were kids. <laughs> I mean, you know, we wanted them even more. We didn't give a shit what was in the book. If there was a hologram foil Spider-Man on the front, like I had <laughs> to have it. You know, it, well, if you look at the quality of the paper that they're printing on over the years, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Now they're like, we're not going to spend money on some foil thing when they're just, they're basically, they have self covers now. So if you notice a lot of indie books, the cover will be a little harder stock than the interior pages. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. the pages of like Marvel and DC, it's the same stock as the inside of the book. So it's yeah. like, they're really cutting corners as they bump up their price 50 cents every year so yeah you know i really miss the old uh the old pages the old pages that yellowed and absorbed every, any bit of moisture from your hand like those were my favorite kind of comic pages when they when they the went old to newspaper like, type paper yeah, yeah yeah i really dug that and i don't know why because it's not as durable as you know the stuff they've used in later years but you know what it was back then comics weren't really like as prestigious i mean that's a weird word to use but they're not as mainstream as they are now mm -hmm. so it was like back then when you read something on that newsprint print a newsprint it kind of gave you that grungy feel like yeah i'm reading my underground comics that like i'm rebelling against the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rebelling against the man by reading my garbage material that none of my parents want me to read so all right <laughs> i guess you've got a point feel. there they, but, but every once in a while, a lot of indie books prints in in newsprint. You can you can order them, and they're cheaper too, and people like it. So, it's it, they're still out there. It's funny because whenever I would get a comic book that had that kind of paper, like I was stoked to have it, but at the same time, I never wanted to touch my fingertips to it because I'm like, well, it'll leave right. a stain on the page. Like I better get the tweezers <laughs> or something. <laughs> like I had Action Comics number one or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's just something about picking up one of those old books and like flipping through it, like that smell you get of the old paper. I know some people oh, that yeah. smell grosses them out, but I just love the smell of an uh, old comic or an old book. Just recently, I, in preparation for the Why the Last Man show, I mean, it's not that old, but I, I went through and read all my single issues of Why the Last Man, the whole run. And I mean, that was what, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. So it was, it's a little retro, a little nostalgia. And I love the in-house ads that they were coming out. Oh, yeah. Like you get, it's kind of like a time capsule. You don't get that when you read trades yeah. nowadays, because they read, they take all the ads out. But when you read the single issues, it's, it's like you jump back in time and I'm seeing ads for the WWF attitude era. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, wild. it's kind of, it's cool. It's wild stuff. It really puts you in that time period. Oh yeah. I, I've got some old comics on the shelf that I, I went through a phase where I was going through them just looking at the ads, kind of looking for uh, uh, social media material, things to put on uh, Instagram. Actually, maybe I'll do that again because I'm kind of hard up for content. But anyway, I found one from the early 80s. It was a advert for uh, tennis shoes and the spokesman was OJ Simpson. <laughs> and it just said, show them your heels. And I thought, fuck, that did not age well at all. <laughs> He's running. <laughs> it was funny. And, you know, when you see those old thing, old uh, ads for like the X-ray specs, I mean, I guess they're very uh, stereotypical ads you would see or think about, think of when you think of comic books. But you know what I mean? Those old kind of things are, you know, send fifteen ninety five and get a whole kit to build a hover car at home. <laughs> oh, sea Out monkeys. of the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Sea yeah. monkeys was a big one. Yeah. I wanted that hovercraft. I did too. But you I wanted know, to look like Mr. Olympia. <laughs> yeah, that dude was ripped, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, that hover thing, there's no way that worked. I think it's just like one of those things where, uh, you know, like the military hover cars they have where it's just like a big inner tube that's like pushing air out from underneath it, which makes it levitate mm -hmm. maybe like three to four inches. I think it was one of those kind of things, but I can't imagine there's any vacuum cleaner motor or whatever that's going to give that kind of propulsion. That's going to pick your fat ass up off the ground, including this whole machine. You guys, yeah. I don't know if this is your, um, your age demographic, but do you remember Pete and Pete on Nickelodeon? Mm -hmm. I never watched it, but I remember it. I, yeah, same here. I didn't watch it. There was it, an episode where the younger Pete 
Um, he worked like all summer in order to save up money to buy a jetpack from one of those magazines. <laughs> And he was like, he had like fantasies of like flying around and he finally bought it and it came back and it was like a leaf blower. It was just, <laughs> he's like, no. It was very... <laughs> Me and my, it's... go ahead. I was just gonna say, it's weird the things you remember. Like I can't, I could remember probably three things out of that whole show, but what that is one of them. There, there was an ad, and it wasn't in a comic book. I can't remember what kind of magazine it was in, in the late 90s, that me and my buddy saw for a gyrocopter. You remember those things at all? Mm-hmm. It was just like a little one-man home-built helicopter thing. And um, it was like, you pay two grand, and you get everything you need for it. You just have to assemble it. And he and I were like, all right, <laughs> We're going to do this. How cool to be flying. And, you know, again, we were in high school. So we thought, what if we got it built? And then on our last day of school, we flew to school, you know, and it, it was crazy. We never ended up buying one because we ended up watching a video of um, some guy flying one and shit going horribly wrong and seeing how he <laughs> dropped from the sky like a rock. We're like, well, moving on, not doing that. <laughs> Next dumb thing, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there were plenty other dumb things to fill the void. Trust mm-hmm. me. But anyway, uh, what about conventions, uh, Frank? Do you get out, uh, do the con circuit much with uh, Grim Space? Not particularly. I did my first convention in last month in four years. So since before wow. COVID. So yeah, it was it was good. It was fun. I have a lot more books on my table now, which is also always nice. Uh, I'm trying to do it. Trying to do little. Uh, local shows boutique shows trying to be the only comic creator at some of these stuff like i'm doing a horror and tattoo convention so i'm trying Mm -hmm. to be like little niche markets where i don't have to compete with a whole bunch of comic people but uh yeah i mean i'm yeah i'm trying to get out a little bit you know so maybe here and there it's hard getting away you know the working wife three kids and uh yeah standing on your feet for a whole weekend talking to strangers trying to convince them to give you money yeah, that would be rough, yeah. man. That'd be a hard job. <laughs> but you know what? The the convention I did in March was it was indie comic book convention. Like all everybody there was an indie comic creator. There wasn't any cosplay. There wasn't any like weird merchandise people were selling. There wasn't any big uh, like celebrities or anything. It was just hyper focused, which makes made it a lot easier because if I'm doing convention and there's celebrities and people are selling Spider Man crap and Batman shit. It's it's like I have to convince them to care about what I'm doing. It's like right. I have to sell right. the aspect of indie comics before I sell my indie comics. Whereas in this, it was like they came to the convention specifically to see indie stuff. So it's like it, it was easier to pitch to them because they were already receptive rather than me trying to catch them on the way to get a, sign, a signature from the next Stranger Things star, you know? Yeah, that's true. They do. You guys do have to work extra hard. I know like when we've covered conventions um, that have celebrities and all the stuff you were just mentioning, whenever we do go down Artist Alley, you know, you you have to really kind of sometimes keep your eyes to the ground, make sure you don't make a lot of eye contact (laughs) because I mean, it's like an aisle of beggars, you know, like over here, like trying to pull you in all different directions. And there's nothing wrong with that. I understand. But um you know what I mean? At the same time, it can be like, oh, crap, man. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I know exactly what you mean. It's it's an art form to try and get people involved Truly. in your thing when they don't want to be involved in your thing. Right. And sometimes you got to let the fish go. You know, if they're not biting, you, you can't you can't force the hook in their mouth. I, By the way, you're all fish. It. Anybody who's a prospective customer is a fish. I'm just making that analogy. <laughs> Front and center. Don't I don't want anybody to mishear me. Right. Well, I've had I've had some people in Artist Alley who are very, you know, understanding. You know, they understand that what they have might not be for you. But we I, I've had the opposite of that too, where somebody they can sense you're not interested, like, oh, but well, wait, I, you're not interested because I didn't tell you this. Or oh, well, wait, you're not interested because yeah. I didn't show you this no. page. Like they just don't fucking let it go it's like bro I d- that that's a salesman by. skill that i probably adapted from my father is that there's there's a way to talk to people in order to try and sell them you've got to sell them without trying without them realizing that you're selling to them so right. you have to be able to read them and see what type of books are going to appeal to them and what type of book is not and if you don't have that book that's it the conversation's over 
And if you think that they're going to like this thing and they look at it and you look at their face and they're not into it, you know, like it's, it's, it's the end of the conversation. You take it from, you put it on the table and you say, have a nice day. Right. But um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's rough, you know, to do that uh, interaction all day long, you know, for mm-hmm. every single person that walks by. Oh, trust me, man. We've done it with our show and yeah. it's, the second we season. have nothing to offer, really. Even just for the, will you listen to our podcast? Yeah, I mean, we're just selling. It's not toys. like they're walking away with anything. Yeah, yeah. Like what's what's a can dare? Like oh, it's a podcast, and typically you can see that wash of like, oh, yeah. I walked into that one, didn't I? <laughs> 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 but whatever, you know, it is what it is. It, it's yeah, it's rough, isn't it, to sell yourself out there? I mean, but at the end of the day, if you when you sell somebody a book and you, they come back to you later and say that was awesome. I want more. It's like it's a good feeling. Yeah, kind of makes it worth. Kind of makes it worthwhile. I would imagine so, man. That's awesome. Well, I want to uh, let everyone know they can go to frankthewriter.com to find out more about you and some of your other work. They can go over to scoutscomics.com to pick up uh, a Grim Space number one, or we can just go to the Kickstarter, which is, again, kicking off May 7th. You'll have to send us a link for that uh, when it goes live, and we'll uh, help get that out to everyone. I don't think you – you might not have seen it, but I sent you the pre-launch link. It just – Oh, you did? I, I thought got, you said there wasn't one. I got approved today, and I launched it today, and I might have sent it to you too late for you to see it. But the pre-launch link is the same link as the that will be used when it goes live. So, Oh, there it is. Yeah. Huh. Okay, right. cool. Awesome, and, man. Uh, is there anywhere else I should be directing people? No. I mean, that's kind of good. That's kind of cool. And <laughs> as good. a... Uh, as a well, as a little bonus on free comic book day, I'm releasing a, a short Grim Space short to kind of like get people interested in the launch, which is going to be my version of Steamboat Willie. So it's going to be oh spaceship. nice. Oh. It's going to be it's going to be a, a six page short uh, spaceship Willie. So it's like my Grim Space Steamboat Willie. Kind where of where can people get that? I have no idea. <laughs> it's it's, it's <laughs> going to be a problem, Frank. It's a digital only short, so um, so I'll, if you follow me somewhere on socials, if you're on my website and sign up for my mailing list, it will definitely be shared. That is so freaking cool! You jumped right on that, man. Awesome. I yeah, I'm a I'm a. What can I say? I saw that it was like everybody else and their mother who saw Steamboat Willie was coming up for public domain i jumped on it i was like this is an opportunity for believe you me i was trying to think of ways we could do something with it but i was just like i don't see what a what a two-rate podcast could do with steamboat willie but you made it happen man that's awesome i cannot wait to see that it's cool timing in that my the campaign launches on a tuesday may 7th and free comic book day is that saturday so it's kind of like i could drop steam uh spaceship willie and then let people know that in just a couple more days I'm going to be going online with the campaign. So there you go, man. Hopefully it works out. Sweet. Awesome. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world, though. I don't think you're really going to need it, man. I mean, you've been down this road, Kickstarter. No, road before, I'll take and... the luck. Do not do not skimp on the luck. <laughs> okay. Well, all, all the same. Best of luck to you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited to see it. And please uh, shoot a link over when you find out where that free digital is going to be, because I really want to see that steamboat or what would what, you say it was going to be called? Spaceship Space Willie. Spaceship, oh, Spaceship Willie. Willie. All right. That's going to be awesome. I'm excited as hell. <laughs> well, Frank, once again, man, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I can't wait to have you on again, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> Jack, what do we got on the website, sir? Go to candairpodcast.com where you can listen, like, follow, subscribe, see us all on our social media, become a patron, buy some merch, see some YouTube videos, and if you'd like to be a guest and promote your work, send us an email on our contacts page. And don't forget to find us on Twitter at CandairPod, on Instagram at Canned underscore Air, and on TikTok at Canned Air Podcast. And uh, the website Jack was just talking about, candairpodcast.com, has a merch tab and a Patreon tab, two ways to support us and get something in return. And um, if you've only been listening to us for the past, uh, you know, what is it now, 11, going on 11 years, check out our YouTube page where all of our episodes since the turn of the new year are going to be going up in video form as well. And if you've only found us recently on uh, YouTube, check out our audio catalog going back over a decade. Lots and lots of content, people. Check it out. And uh, what else, Jack? What am I forgetting? 
Evergreen. Evergreen Podcast, the network we're so proud to be a part of. Well, we are proud to be a part of them. Maybe we should start thinking about some different shit to say. I mean, we're saying it like this, that same line verbatim every week, aren't we? <laughs> it starts to lose its sincerity after a while, but it's the truth. Just get a soundboard. Just hit the button. Just have to yeah. Forward. <laughs> Just Evergreen button. Like, Podcast. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> That's the one. I'll Put hear. it at like one and a half times speed, so it's just like Evergreen Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll just come on and say Evergreen Podcast Network and hit that button. That for, that's all we'll say. That'll just be it. They'll know. <laughs> anyway, I've got too much sun today. I'm fucking out of my mind. I think that's going to do it for this week's episode. So until next time, I am Jeremy Colley, and I'm Jack Doherty, and I'm Frank Martin. Thank you so much for listening and watching, everyone. Be excellent to each other.